All right, folks, so in our last video, we talked about uh, recurving ridges and how it's important to identify a sufficient recurving ridge so that we can uh, ultimately find the fingerprint core. Uh, in this short video, we're going to talk about how to identify what are called type lines uh, and how those type lines are going to help us find uh, what's referred to as the fingerprint's delta. If you remember, uh, the reason we're looking for things like recurving ridges and deltas is if you remember before I mentioned that to identify a fingerprint as a loop uh, there are three uh, features that a fingerprint must have to be considered a loop. Uh, again it must have uh, one good sufficient recurving ridge, it must have a delta, and it must have a, a ridge count. And so in order to be able to find uh, the deltas we need to next talk about how to figure out whether or not our fingerprint has type lines and where they are because that's going to help us figure out where the delta is. All right, so what are type lines? Uh, type lines are ridges, two ridges in a fingerprint that are uh, the innermost ridges which basically run parallel to each other and then they diverge and then tend to surround uh, what's called the pattern area. Remember the pattern area refers to the area in the fingerprint that includes the delta, the core, and the ridges that are used in the classification of the fingerprint. So type lines. Again, type lines are ridges that run parallel to each other and then diverge or spread apart. Uh, that's different from what we call a bifurcation. Um, bifurcations are fingerprint ridges which split into two or fork, whereas type lines diverge. And the best way to help us understand what type lines are is to use a metaphor of a river. So type lines are like the banks of a river. If we look at a river uh, as it flows and meanders through uh, the landscape, you notice that the banks of the river, for the most part, uh, run parallel to each other. So they're the same distance apart. They run parallel to each other as one turns left, so does the other. So they, they run parallel to each other. Now the thing about a river, though, is when a river hits a large body of water, like a sea or an ocean or a lake, the, the banks of the river diverge or spread apart. So if we look at this uh, river here, we look and we see that the banks of the river are roughly traveling parallel to each other. But then notice as the river dumps into this large body of water, this lake here, notice they begin to spread apart or diverge. And right here, where those uh, lines or banks diverge, we find what's called the delta. You may have heard of the famous Nile River Delta or the Mississippi River Delta. Uh, those areas are found right where those rivers dump into large bodies of water like the Mediterranean Sea or the Gulf of Mexico. So uh, this, these type lines are going to help us find the fingerprint's uh, delta. All right, so let's look at these two fingerprints. Remember, uh, type lines are the innermost uh, ridges which travel parallel to each other and then diverge. So let's look at the fingerprint uh, here on the left-hand side. Notice that we have some ridges here that are traveling roughly parallel to each other, kind of like uh, the banks of a river. Notice they're traveling parallel to each other. And notice when we get to about this point right here, notice how this line here, how it branches off and then goes off to the left. And then this line here, how it branches off and suddenly opens up to the right. And so we have this area here where these two lines that are traveling roughly parallel to each other, they open up where they diverge. And so it's right between these two type lines that we're going to find our delta. So in this particular fingerprint, this is the type line, and this is the other type line, and where they diverge in the middle here is where we find what's called our delta. Looking at the fingerprint on the right here, again we're looking for two ridges that travel roughly parallel to each other and then diverge. Right, so there's lots of ridges that travel parallel. We can see that these ridges here, these are traveling parallel, but in no place do they actually diverge. But down here we can see that this ridge, it's traveling, and then suddenly notice how it branches off and travels left, and then this ridge here, it branches off and travels down and to the right. So we have this, these ridges that are traveling parallel that diverge, and so this ridge here is one of the type lines, and then this ridge here, this is another one of the type lines, and so this is the area of divergence. And so right here is where we find our fingerprint's delta. So since the delta is so important in determining whether or not our fingerprint is a loop or not, we need to be able to figure out what are type lines. So let's talk a little bit more about these type lines. All right, so when locating type lines, uh, it is necessary to understand the difference between a divergence and a bifurcation, as I mentioned before. Uh, some ridges, as they're traveling along, for instance, this ridge here, as they travel along, suddenly they split into two. Uh, 
Uh, so we can see that this one kind of almost like a fork in the road. This is not a divergence. This is what we call a bifurcation. And we'll talk more about bifurcations later on. But bifurcations aren't type lines. Type lines are when we have ridges that are traveling parallel to each other and then spread apart or diverge. And so it's important to understand the difference between uh, bifurcation or divergence. Now, it's important to remember also that type lines are not always two continuous ridges, um, but sometimes can be broken. Uh, when there's a definite break in the type line, the ridge immediately outside of it is, con is considered its continuation. So, for example, here we have type line, type line. Notice how it breaks, though. Well, here's the remainder of the type line here. So another rule about type lines there. All right, uh, another thing about type lines. Sometimes we get ridges which we call abutting ridges, which form an angle. Abutting ridges is when you have two ridges that, that basically run into each other at an angle. So, for example, here we have a ridge and then a ridge, and notice how they intersect at this kind of hard, almost 90 degree angle. Or here we have a ridge here and a ridge here, and they abut into a 90 degree angle. When it comes to type lines, uh, one of the rules is that abutting ridges uh, cannot be type lines. So even though we have this ridge, which is traveling roughly parallel to this ridge, this ridge is a type line, but because this one forms an abutting ridge or angle, it's not. So the actual type line is the one just outside of it, so it's actually this one. So on this fingerprint, this is a type line, and then this is a type line, but, and then this is, of course, our delta, actually, where we have this abutting ridge. So again, here's another one. Here's our type line here. Here's our type line here. Uh, again, this abutting ridge, it can't be a type line, but actually it does happen to be our delta because it's that point between the area of divergence for our type lines. So again, here's another example, type line, type line, and then there's this abutting angle. This one can't be the type line, but it can, in fact, actually be uh, the delta. Uh, another important rule when it comes to type line is the arms of a bifurcation on which the delta is located can never be used for the type lines. Um, and so sometimes we have a bifurcation uh, that becomes our delta. Remember, the delta is the area between the divergence. Um, the arms of a bifurcation, which um, are on which the delta is located can't be used for actual type lines. And so that's another rule to consider here. So here we have a bifurcation, which is this point here is going to be our delta. And so that means that this cannot be a, a, a type line. So we have a type line here and a type line here, and our delta is going to be here. All right, so the delta. What is the delta? Uh, the delta is found in the area directly in front of the point of divergence of the two type lines. Uh, and the delta is a point on a ridge which is at or nearest the point of divergence of the two type lines and is located directly in front of the point of divergence. So going back to our analogy of the river, remember that uh, on a river, when a river empties into a large body of water, so like we have a river here and it's dumping into this large body where we have this, this area of divergence, or even here where we have this area of diver divergence, sometimes when a river dumps into a large body of water, we get this buildup that we see here in the photo of dirt and soil. This is dirt and soil that's been carried down the river and has been dumped in this area here. This is called a delta. And so uh, just like the analogy of a river delta, in a fingerprint, whenever we have our two type lines, we're going to find our delta right here where the type lines diverge. So looking at our fingerprints here, or our examples here, the delta is that point on a ridge which is at or nearest the point of a divergence of the two type lines, and it's located directly in front of the point of divergence. Now, a delta can be a lot of different things. There's, we're going to talk later about different types of Galton points or minutia. We're going to talk about dots and bifurcations, short ridges, abutting ridges, ending ridges. Um, all of these can be um, the delta. So for example, a dot. Uh, can be the delta. So here we have a type line and a type line. So that means we're going to look for some sort of a point which is closest to the area of divergence. So here's our area by divergence. So this dot feature here is then going to be the delta. Looking here at this fingerprint, here is one type line. Here is another type line. Again, we're looking for the point uh, that is nearest the divergence. So here we have this point, which is where this abutting ridge is. So that's the delta. So in some cases, a delta can be a dot. In another case, a delta can be an abutting ridge. Or in this case, here we have our type line, which, which diverges outwards. Here's our other di type line, which diverges outwards. And so then now a bifurcation uh, becomes our actual delta. Or it could be a short ridge, or it could be an ending ridge, or even it could be uh, a part of a recurving ridge, which could be our delta. So again, the delta is the area between our two type lines. It's, it's the point 
closest to the area of divergence. So let's look at these two fingerprints. And let's see if we can figure out uh, where the type lines are and then try to identify where the delta is. So let's look at the fingerprint here on the left first. Remember, the, the type lines are ridges that are traveling roughly parallel to each other, which then diverge. Oops, went too far. Let's go back to this, this fingerprint here. So let's look. We Notice we have these, this ridge here, which travels roughly parallel. And notice how then it diverges to the left. And then notice how we have a ridge that's traveling. And then notice how it diverges to the right. So we have this area by divergence. We have these parallel lines that then diverge. So this is one type line. And this is the other type line. And so then what we're looking for for our delta is the point closest to that area of divergence. So here we have this short ridge. And so this end of the short ridge right here, that's our delta. So let's look at this fingerprint, the fingerprint on the right. Again, we're looking for two ridges that run parallel to each other that then diverge. All right. So we have a lot of ridges running parallel to each other here. We have some ridges running parallel to each other here on the right. But notice here. Notice we have, have these ridges here running parallel to each other, and then notice that it diverges to the right. And then this ridge splits and diverges to the left. So now we're looking for the point closest to that divergence. So this point right here, where we have what looks like this abutting ridge here, this point right here, that's our delta. So both of these ridges have a delta. And if you remember, there are three characteristics that are necessary to identify a fingerprint as a loop. Again, those three characteristics are it must have a recurving ridge, it must have a delta, and then the third thing, which we're going to talk about in the next video, is going to be ridge count. Let's look at these two fingerprints, though, also, and let's see if they have a sufficient recurve. Let's, let's put into practice some learning we had from the first video. Remember, we're looking for the innermost recurving ridge. So let's look at the ridges here. Now, we have several ridges which flow in from the left side. They, they travel up and then they loop back around and, and travel out that same left side. So there are several of them here. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, almost ten ridges. But again, we're looking at the innermost ridge that recurves. Here we have a ridge that spikes, but notice here, here's a recurving ridge. Now remember, we want to find the innermost recurving ridge that is not spoiled. Remember, what spoils the ridge is if it has some sort of appendage poking, poking off of it at a 90 degree angle somewhere between the shoulders. Well, let's find the two shoulders. So here we have a recurving ridge. Here's one shoulder, here's the other shoulder. We notice that it's free of any appendages, so this is a good recurving ridge. So in terms of this fingerprint, it definitely has a sufficient recurve or one good recurving ridge, and we've already identified that it has a delta. Looking here at the fingerprint on the right, we can see that there's a type line, and we can see that there's another type line. We can see then that there's a delta. So now the question is, does it have a good recurving ridge? So let's see. There are several recurving ridges, so let's look at the innermost one. Here's the innermost recurving ridges. Now we see that it has a couple of spikes here in the inside, but neither one of those pokes through. So we don't have uh, any appendages on the outside of this recurving ridge. So it also has a good sufficient recurve. So both of these fingerprints at least meet the, the two first requirements for a loop. Now another thing about delta to remember that makes it easy is the, the letter delta is a Greek letter, uh, like in the, the Greek alphabet, alpha, uh, omega, beta. A delta is a, a letter in the Greek alphabet, and interestingly enough, the way you write the Greek letter delta is it's, a, it's actually written as a triangle. Well, the interesting thing about deltas is deltas, because of the, the type lines that diverge, is that where the delta is, you almost kind of see a triangular formation. So if we look at this fingerprint here, we can quickly identify where the delta is because we can see that there's this somewhat triangular shape formation right here. So when you're looking at a fingerprint, it's usually pretty easy to pick out where the delta is if you can quickly just find where that triangular formation is. So if I quickly see there's a triangular formation here, now I can see that my type lines are here and then here. And so then my delta must be here, right smack in the middle of this kind of triangular formation right there. So another way to, to help you easily remember uh, where the, the delta is. All right, a couple rules about deltas that we have to go over really quick, though. Uh, a delta may not be located on a bifurcation that does not open towards the core. So remember, deltas can be on bifurcations, but that bifurcation has to open towards the core, not towards um, the out, outer portion of the fingerprint. So that's an important thing to remember. Also to remember, when there are two or more bifurcations that open towards the core, the one that's nearest the core should be the one that's chosen. So for example, here's a good example. So here's our type lines here and here. But notice this ridge who's in the middle of these type lines. See how it bifurcates twice? We pick the one closest to the core or the innermost recurving ridge as the actual delta. Now why is that important? Why is it so important that we, we choose this as our delta rather than this?
Well, later on when we talk about ridge count, it's important that we put the delta in the right location to make sure we get an accurate ridge count. If we put the delta in the wrong spot, then our ridge count might be off, and so we might inadvertently call something a loop that's actually not. And so it's very important that we accurately identify the location of the delta. So that's why these rules are important. All right, another couple rules about deltas. Whenever you have more than one choice uh, in terms of what could be the delta, you always choose the bifurcation if it's one of those two choices. So for example, on this fingerprint, here's one of our type lines. Here's our other type line. So now we have two different points that we could choose from. It could be the dot or it could be the bifurcation. Well, our rule says that whenever we have the choice between a bifurcation and some other point, we always choose the bifurcation. So in this example, the bifurcation would be the delta and not the dot. Or, for example, here, here's our type lines. So now we have either the choice of this end of this uh, ending ridge or the bifurcation. Again, we always choose the bifurcation. So that's just another rule to remember. Uh, and then another one to remember is the delta may not be located in the middle of a ridge that starts below the point of divergence. So, for example, let's look at this fingerprint. Here's our type line. Here's our other type line. Notice we have this short ridge that sits here between our two type lines. Uh, now, we could either choose this end of the, of the short ridge or this end. Well, our rule says that we always want to choose the end that's past the point of divergence. So here's our type line. Here's our type line. So our error divergence is here. So we would actually choose this end of the ending ridge and not this end of the ending ridge as our delta. Um, so that's, uh, that's how we figure out deltas. Again, uh, the delta is important for us to determine to, because it's one of the features that a, that a loop must have, and also that delta is going to help us figure out how to do a ridge count, which we're going to talk about in our next video.